Um, so, yeah, as I said, uh, I'm Aggie Brand Tolbert and I'm one of the founders uh, of Lixia Limited. Um, um, and I'm also a, a research fellow, so I run uh, my own research group in the Department of Chemistry at Imperial College London. Um, and I want to talk, tell you today a bit more about I, uh, our ionic liquid based wood fractionation process. Um, so, um, a little bit to start with uh, about Lixia uh, and where we are at, at the moment. So, um, the company was founded in 2017. Uh, we were originally named Crystalix Technologies. Uh, so, you, you may have come across that before and there's three uh, founders, um, there's me uh, on the photo and the next to me is Florence, our CEO and Professor Jason Hallett who's in chemical engineering. Um, we're currently 10 people um, so the team has grown um, since we started the journey. We uh, are commercializing a patented technology um, that produces cellulose and lignin from lignocellulosic biomass uh, and we use low-cost ionic liquid uh, um, water mixtures. Um, we um, have done lots of academic lab development initially, so there's papers, some of them I'll cite later. Um, and um, as part of the uh, commercialization, we, um, we've also done some upscaling. Um, so our initial experiments, if you see in the corner here, I don't know if you can see my, um, my pointer. Um, at the 10 milliliter scale. So that's where we do kind of our screening experiments. Then we also have um, one liter reactor in the lab. And in order to go a bit bigger, we went to bio-based pilot plant. Um, I've seen there are some representatives here. So it's me actually standing in the bio-based pilot plant uh, and running our ionic liquid process at the um, 100 and 200 liter scale. Um, and based on that, we won last year an ERC accelerator blended finance um, funding from, from the European Commission to build a uh, proper pilot plan that is designed for, so that we run our process. Um, and so, yeah, we, we've just started this actually in June. Um, um, and um, yes, yeah, so hopefully in a, in a year and a bit, there'll be a pilot plan up and running. At the moment, we can provide cellulose and lignin at the like 100 gram scale. So using the reactor star I've shown you, I'm showing you on the slide. But when the pilot plant is up and running, then there's also going to be kilograms of materials available. Um, and yeah, we're very interested. So we're making lignin um, and we're very interested in finding uh, partners uh, for product development. Um, we, we can burn our lignin, so it's cheap enough, the process, uh, but uh, would be interesting to, uh, maybe for at least part of the lignin to find value added applications um, as we are big uh, circular economy fans. Um, very briefly, I, I don't have much time, but if you haven't heard of ionic liquids, what are they? So they're liquids um, and that, that way they're used as uh, solvents for reactions, um, for extractions. Um, what's different about ionic liquids is that they're charged, um, they're made of charged components. Molecules are assemblies of atoms that are neutral in itself. Um, ionic liquids are made from a uh, cation and an anion um, that always come together. Um, and normally, so they're salts, and normally when you think of salts, you think of the sodium chloride in your cupboard, uh, which is a solid. Um, a lot of salts are solid because of the strong inter and interactions between the cation and the anion. So table salt melts at 800 degrees Celsius, so you'll not, not see it liquid um, 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 pure uh, in your kitchen, even if you try to heat it up quite hard. Um, but um, um, ionic liquids, so if you design, if you pick the cations and anions in a certain way and you can use a certain toolkit for it, then you get salts that are have a low melt melting point um, and then they're liquids and then you can do chemistry in them and fractionations in them. Um, to kind of like jump in, uh, um, so the, this is kind of how our process works. It's quite simple, um, which helps with the economics. Uh, so we're using low cost acidic ionic liquids, um, usually at temperatures above 120 degrees. And the ionic liquids that we've selected from a huge pool, so there's many ionic liquids, 
have a high lignin extracting power. Uh, so that's key about them. Um, they don't dissolve cellulose. Uh, we decided early on that dissolving the cellulose is not a good, good idea um, because it's hard to do. Uh, it limits you to ionic liquids that aren't economically interesting. Um, so what happens during the process is um, in when we heat the wood with the uh, with the biomass, the hemicellulose and the lignin get uh, are extracted, um, and then we can filter off the cellulose, um, wash it, um, and then we add water, um, simply water, to re recover the lignin. So there's no additional um, chemicals needed; just add water, and the lignin precipitates out. Um, and then we um, uh, need to take out that water again. Um, to go get back to the original water contents. There's always some water in it. Um, so we're fluctuating between two different water contents. Um, and when we distill out the water, then the volatiles uh, come out as well. So we see acetic acid and porphyrol. Um, because ionic liquids are, have these strong interactions between the cation and anion, um, they're non-volatile, um, so we can't recycle the solvent uh, by distillation uh, as for example agarnasulf processes do. Um, so um, this helps us with solvent recovery. I'll show you um, data later. Um, but it means that anything that's dissolved in it and we haven't taken out during the filtration and the um, 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 distillation will cycle um, cycle along. Uh, so we need to check whether that kind of you know there's nothing um, uh, there's nothing accumulating. So that was a really important thing. Um, so here is what we get. So we're basically getting a cellulose-rich pulp um, when, we, uh, when we do the, um, the, 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 when we run the process. Um, we've worked on this for quite a while. And so um, these are the pillars of work that we've done or we're currently doing. So we designed ionic liquids first for function and then uh, we are very aware that solvent and solvent-based processes, solvent cost is key. Uh, so we um, we designed the ionic liquids also for the lowest possible cost, and we've reached um, prices that are similar. So we just talked, uh, kind of heard about acetone-based uh, pulping in the Fabiola process. So our, our ionic liquids are the same cost, uh, or even sometimes cheaper um, than acetone, depends on the oil price. Um, um, and that's very important for the process economics. Uh, we've also demonstrated recycling, um, um, process intensification. Uh, so looking at some of this, uh, we screened a lot of different feedstocks, including softwood and even metal contaminated uh, waste wood. Um, and now we're increasingly interested in valorizing uh, the products, uh, which is the cellulose and the lignin. We're also thinking what we could do with the uh, dissolved hemicellulose, um, making for fural or for acid. Um, briefly, kind of key um, issues with ionic liquids, if you're interested in the field, um, you come across the um, concerns about price. Um, so here's what we did in order to evolve the ionic liquids. Um, so we went from 20 kilos, um, $20 per kilo or euros um, uh, initially, which is not bad for an ionic liquid, but we managed to reduce it by a factor of 10 to a dollar. And that's because the ionic liquids are made from a simple bulk amine like triisalamine and um, sulfuric acid, um, which is a, a very cheap chemical. Um, um, we've also looked into here's again another thing um, that is key um, to you want to have a very fast process um, so you can have a small reactor and high throughput. So we demonstrated that you can run the process. Uh, you can run at lower temperatures, but you're really getting short times when you go to 150 uh, degrees C or um, um, or or higher temperatures, and we can literally pretreat um, to the extraction in, in minutes. Um, these, this is an actually the small vials, so it's not optimized, small unstirred vials. Um, so hopefully this process development can really hit just a few minutes in the reactor um, to get a cellulose and a lignin. Um, the recycling was quite important. 
also not for, for general process performance, but we also were looking carefully at lignin uh, yield um, and lignin characteristics when you reuse the ionic liquid. Um, and here are some data from one of our papers that was published three years ago. Um, and as you can, as you can see, um, the performance holds up uh, both for cellulose quality um, and uh, we um, recover the lignin. So any lignin that doesn't come out in the first cycle comes out in subsequent cycles. Um, um, and there seems to be a, um, 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 yeah, um, kind of a balanced um, steady state that is uh, being approached. And um, what we were re really pleased about is the ionic liquid recovery. So solvent recovery, I'm sure the organosol people know this, is a huge issue and a huge influence on the uh, sort of, um, viability of the process. And we could, at the lab scale, a very small scale, demonstrate more than 99% uh, um, solvent recovery. Um, and we also, so we checked uh, inorganic salt uh, buildup as well. Um, and yeah, we, we don't see that the organic, inorganic salts build up in the ionic liquid. Um, um, we were making, before I come to lignin, a quick word on our cellulose pulp. Um, so we're making a cellulose, uh, we're making a cellulose. Um, we've initially looked a lot at hydrolyzing it, but then we asked the question, could we actually, um, you know, use it as a material because of the, uh, the lignin content is low uh, in under optimized conditions. So it's a bit like a pulping process. Um, and indeed our cellulose is bleachable and the crystallinity is retained when we look at the XRD. Um, um, the molar weight um, reduces um, because the solvent the ionic liquid is acidic. Um, but uh, it, it looks in an interesting range for maybe dissolving pulp. Um, or nanocellulose. Are oh, we still looking? So we're also looking for cellulose partners. But I know we're this is lignin, so <laughs> let's not talk too much about cellulose. Um, so here, here's here's lignin, the star of the show. Um, so we looked, um, we started looking at li uh, our lignin five years ago with a bit more detail. Um, and what we found is, um, so I guess first of all. <laughs> Good news, it smells nice. Actually, our lignans usually have a slight vanilla touch. We even we send it to a um, perfume manufacturer recently and got the results back and they said like, yeah, it smells nice. They're kind of um, trained testers. Um, not kind of long lasting and enough for them to consider it further for the products, but they we have you know, just got my lower a report that says our lignin smells nice. Um, it is brown, like most lignans, um, and that's due to, um, yeah, during those conditions, lignin just, uh, it, it hydrolyzes. Um, um, so the, the ESA bonds hydrolyze, and there's also condensation reaction uh, happening, um, similar to what's happening maybe in craft processing. So the lignin is brown. Uh, we consistently find that the um, ash content is low. Um, and the phenolic content can be um, tuned, uh, depending on the severity. Um, when we look at the effect of recycling, we didn't see uh, much, uh, much of a difference. Uh, so the, the lignin is condensed, um, as I said. So you, we can see in the, uh, in the NMR spec, we can see some evidence, so I circled uh, uh, structures where the rings have reacted. Um, um, so we don't assume that the lignin is linear, um, but it, it looks fairly consistently in, in its quality. Um, obviously, really analyzing lignin on a structural basis after it's extracted is really difficult, and I'm sure the technical people appreciate that. Um, and the mo molar weight seems to also sort of fluctuate a bit at the startup, but then seems to level out. Um, you can see that the lignin is quite polydispersed, um, which you expect for condensed lignin. What is really interesting um, uh, about our process is the way it's run because we're adding water um, to the lignin. So initially we just added enough water to precipitate all of the lignin, but then we uh, 
um, came up with the idea to add uh, the water in small steps and use this as an inbuilt uh, fractionation. So rather than fractionate your lignin kind of in a, in a, in a post isolation step, um, but why not do it? Um, you know, while, while you're isolating the lignin, while you're recovering the ionic liquid. Um, and so we did that study and it just got published um, this year. Um, and as you can see, um, we can, um, so the, we, we, we can fractionate the lignin. A lot of it comes out straight, even if you add just small amounts of water, which again is good for, I guess, for the economics, the less water we need to add uh, to purify the lignin, um, the, the ionic liquid, the better. Uh, but we do get some uh, smaller fractions. Um, so if, if we keep adding more water, we get some fractions that have a very, um, that are you know much more defined in molar weight and put it, uh, have what well, they yeah find and they have a shorter molar weight, and that's very interesting. So what, how we see this is that maybe you can fraction, you can first take out the very poorly dispersed condensed lignin. Um, send that to incineration or some value, you know, applications that don't care, and then isolate the more defined lignans uh, by adding more water um, later, um, while just in the plant, so you don't need to have a second step for that. Um, I think I'm nearly finished. The one thing, so that was mostly what based on the fractionation, and as as you see, we haven't done much on lignin applications um, so we're really looking forward to doing more on that. What I'm currently doing in my uh, research group is we're looking at carbon fibers um, from iron sulfur lignans. Um, that's not an easy task uh, so uh, but um, if, if that works that's a, it's a really great application because we can potentially make much lower carbon fibers, lower cost carbon fibers than the current ones um, and they're bio-based as well. Um, so everyone wins the commercial uh, uh, team and the sustainability team. And we're developing uh, protocols for making these, um, uh, for making, bringing lignin into a fiber form using, using ionic liquids uh, that are designed for that. Um, and then also I'm really interested in making lignin architectures that make the calm fibers. They need to be a bit more stronger um, than what, yeah. The state of the art is currently. Um, that's our current spin set, lab based uh, spin up, uh, uh, spinning setup. Um, yeah, um, so that's, that's it. Um, thank you for listening. Um, please get in touch or ask questions. Um, and yeah, follow us on Twitter um, as well. Um, thank you.